collection, all 67 pairs. With size 12 feet, it's hard for Shandy Strong to find shoes that fit. So I when she sees a pair in the store, she buys them. You know, these ones here, I have, a, I have a dress that goes perfect with it. I have a purse that goes perfect with it. That's why these cupboards are filled with dozens of styles and a rainbow of colors. And if you look in her closet, her collection of clothes is just as impressive. Daughter and I, uh, our favorite color is purple, and we both have that same top. When I was going through puberty and stuff like that, that's when I started to find the fascination with, you know, my mom's clothes and, and my mom's makeup and stuff like that, and what she did, and, and why were women so different? Why did they have all this fun stuff, and boys had plain stuff? You know, nothing like, you know, my, when my dad got dressed up to go out, put on a suit and a tie, it, it, it you know, I don't boring. You know, when my mom got dressed up, you know, and did her hair and, and, and you know, a pretty dress and her makeup and stuff like that, it was just like, wow. You know, it, it was so much more um, special, I guess you could say. And I'm going, I want to do that. I don't want to be boring. I want to be glamorous. And that, that's, that started to, you know, attract me to that kind of stuff back then. I like, to, I like to keep some of my favorite pieces. I have given, you know, some away from time to time. But Shandy now, is I, a cross-dresser. Whatever I can, this we just got uh, last fall. She it? dresses like a man during the day and then changes into female clothes when she gets home. She recently came out to her co-workers and friends. 80s stuff. <laughs> 80s is coming back. I think I was aware of it for, for a long, long time. Just It wasn't tangible, um, probably until I became a um, teenager. Um, my cousin and I, for example, used to play G.I. Joes. Everybody had these G.I. Joes that were like yay big, um, you know, same size as Barbies and stuff like that. And as we played G.I. Joes, I found out more often that I wanted to be the Barbie. So I would take four of my sister's Barbie and you know, be be the Barbie rather than than the the GI Joe or the Ken, um, and and that's kind of when I started figuring out that I was you know a tad different. Shandy was born in 1961. She jokes that even as a little boy, she looked good in a skirt, and as she grew up, the feeling to leave her male identity behind became even stronger. Then when I got into high school, you know, um, I, I noticed that I, I was a little bit different from most of the guys. I wasn't running around and jumping and, you know, trying to impress the girls so much. I carried my books differently. So I used to get teased for it. I would get teased if my butt jiggled and stuff like that. Um, you know, so I, I just started to discover that I, I was different from most people. I did find my niche of friends and whatnot though, but you know, I didn't fit in quite so much with everybody. And so how did it start for you? Like, was it just Trying on clothes. Yeah, trying on clothes, you know, and mom's going to hate me, but, you know, well, no, she knows. <laughs> but it was, it was, you know, oh, yep, parents are out. Ooh, you know, I want to see what nylons are like. I want to see what wearing a bra is like. And, I've, you know, my mom and I were close enough in size that I was able to borrow some of her clothes and try things out. Yeah. At one point in my life when my parents found out what I was doing, you know, they said, well, we're sending you to a psychiatrist and we're going to figure this out. Um, after a few visits, uh, I, it was determined that I had issues with my father, what teenager doesn't. You know, so that was the end of that. We just kind of stopped seeing them and life went on. We figured we'd, I'd grow out of it. When were you able to fully um, go out dressed as a woman? Um, not actually until um, 12, 13 years ago. You know, again, part of the stigma, you know, you're trying to figure out who you are. You're trying to figure out what's wrong with you. Why are you so different? Why do you feel this way and nobody else does? Why do you feel that people are going to laugh at you? Nobody's going to accept this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and really, for me to become totally comfortable with it, it took meeting my wife. Actually, when we met, um, I met him, not her, um, in a fan club. Um, we were introduced as friends, we were running in the same circles, and, and so we kind of became friends. We were both in relationships at the time, so we confided in each other, we talked to each other, we served on the board together, did projects together, and then my relationship kind of fell apart, and shortly after, uh, his marriage fell, uh, fell apart. So we just kind of got together, stayed together, um, and uh, been married 16 and a half years now, and it's been great. fact that he was not the same like other kinds of guys I dated before or gotten to know before um, in science fiction clubs and that it allowed you to play characters, you know, do costuming, just be different, crazy, um, and have fun. And I like the fact that uh, he was very um, 
open-minded and, and willing to, you know, like just throw away convention and, and to have fun. And he was also a very much a natural leader too. And I found that also, you know, the fact that he could organize and I liked organizing. And we really got along together while working on projects. A few years into their marriage, Shandy shared her secret with Cheryl. We were talking and goofing around with some friends and um, oh, yeah, a couple of friends <laughs> made a couple of comments. My birthday was coming up and uh, one thing led to another and we started talking about different kinds of costumes and, and doing different things and about our fantasies and what we hadn't done before and where we wanted to go with our life even more than what we had already and discussed. And that's when he came out about her and said, you know, I tried this a couple of times before but had uh, had a lot of apprehension about coming out to it about me and I said no problem. <laughs> One of the most nerve-wracking things you know was, was is coming out to people and you know when I when I came out to her she's going well oh, okay that's okay and I was I was shocked I'm going really? It took me actually three years three full years to actually come to the absolute conclusion that she was okay with this. I you know I doubted myself for the longest, longest time. You know, is she, you know, is she staying with me just out of some sense of loyalty? Is this who she is? Does she need me that bad that she's willing to put up with this? You know, why, 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 why? And you know, it's just one of those unconditional love things. And, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, and you know, here we are, 18 years later. And I'm a big Kiss fan since I was a kid. And uh, one of my pride and joy pieces is this one up here where I actually got to meet them. Shandy met the band when they came to Winnipeg. It was a powerful moment, especially since one of their songs inspired her name. joke, especially from early in the relationship. I work in fashion. So I would get home after being in heels and skirts and everything else all day. And the first thing you want to do when you've had the war paint on all day is take it off. The, so the joke goes is that I would come home, take off the brawn heels. She would come home from work and put on the brawn heels. <laughs> and Shandy's style has changed over the years. Where Shandy started going out as Shandy shopping. Um, we would go out shopping together and because we were close enough in size and I knew how something would fit compared to me to her as I would go into the change room try on something she was interested in on and and see whether or not it'd be you know suitable for for her and if it, the fit would be okay <laughs> this is one of the places Cheryl and Shandy were most comfortable Lady Godiva Mary Grant says many cross-dressers shop in her store typically they'll come in three or four times before we actually say anything to them um, and you can, with my experience, for the most part, I can pick a dresser out. Now, I'm not going to tell you the cues because of anybody watching this, you know, will try to come in to beat me at it. <laughs> but what we do is everything is kept very quiet. Everything's kept very confidential. All right, so a gentleman comes in. Some will just come in straight to me and, and say, look, I'm a dresser. Can you help me? Uh, some will come in and, and you just go over them very quietly, say, are you shopping for yourself? Or are you shopping for a, a friend or a partner? And you can tell sometimes by the way they fidget. And I'll say, you know, if you're shopping for yourself, that's quite all right. You know, we cater to the dressers here. And then they, you can just see the relief. Some of the popular items to buy are prosthetic breasts, padded stockings, and this underwear called a gaffer. Okay, it looks like a thong. All righty. This looks like a thong, but there's almost no stretch to it. So this only covers just the genitalia. So what happens is when the fellow is flaccid, he would curl his penis backwards, and then this gives him a totally flat front, so there's no bulges whatsoever. To me, it may not be totally scientific, but it's like a hormone imbalance. But it, everybody immediately thinks it's progesterone or testosterone or estrogen, and it's not. It's if you're going to go to a wedding or a banquet, the first thing you do is you get your hair done, you get your nails done, you wear your prettiest dress, and it's that hormone, which has nothing to do with the sex hormones, that triggers it. And this hormone in some fellows stays at one level, which that's great, you know, they, they can dress and not dress and be happy. Some it goes up and down like a roller coaster, so that it's very low, and as the, the body produces it, and there's more of it in, this, in the bloodstream, it goes up and up and up, and it's like a roller coaster. The higher on the roller coaster you go, the more you've got to dress. That, that uh, intention and that desire is just builds and, and builds and builds. And the way it's at the top, they're dressing. They have to, whether they're doing it in secret, doing it with a club, or, you know, going off. A lot of businessmen will go out of town and do it in their hotel rooms. Um, 
and but then the thing the the hormone will then start to shut down and you start down the other side of the roller coaster and unfortunately because there's so few resources this is where most of them commit suicide because as they get to the bottom I shouldn't be doing this there's something wrong with me I'm, I'm a man men don't dress in women's clothes I need a psychologist I need a psychiatrist and before you know it they're, they're crazy that's why Grant started a Winnipeg social club for cross-dressers called masquerade Launched in 1997, it's a chance for dressers to get together in an environment where they feel safe. And that's where the club has really, really, really helped. Because now the fellows get to come in, they learn they're not the only one, that this is normal. You know, it's quite a percentage of the population that are actual dressers. I can bet anybody that walks in my store, you're working with a dresser in your business, but you don't know it. Because they don't go around dressed. They go around in everyday clothes, it's after hours or parties or this kind of thing is what they dress at. And there's a lot of businessmen in town, any town, that will be wearing stockings and garters under their, stu under their suits, but nobody knows it. Shandy was one of the first people to join the group. That was a, a big step for me. Um, and, you know, by meeting other people that, like me, it was, it was really empowering to say, okay, you know what, here's other people that are like me and they're normal. They have wives and families and jobs and they're great people. You know, I've made a lot of friends. I've had friends that I've known there for, you know, 13 years and they're still my friends and they still, you know, we, we do, we have a lot more in common than just this, which is, which is pretty amazing. What was it like telling your children? Well, we broke them into it very gradually. Um, for the for the longest time, uh, we shared custody with my ex. My kids are from from my previous marriage, um, and you know we would have them for a week, and then they they would be gone for a week. And you know when this became more and more of my life rather than just a, a part time lifestyle, um, you know we had to start breaking them in so that they would be comfortable with it. We've always given them you know the proper information. We tried not to hide things from them. Um, so you know as 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 they became more aware that yeah oh. How come your legs are shaved and how come you have toenail polish on and things like that? You know, we explained to them little by little and gradually, you know, over, over a couple of years, you know, they got, oh, okay, that's cool. Having to hide that, you know, from um, friends and family members has, has increased some distance. You know, um, my wife's parents, for example, are still two of the three important people in my life that have to know and we haven't told them yet because you know, we're afraid of whatever repercussions, how hurt they might be, but it's also put some distance between us. You know, we used to be very close, and um, as this has become, for lack of a better term, taken over, um, you know, we're not seeing them as much. You know, we don't hang out with them as much. There are times when I've hidden in the basement or hidden behind a door when they've knocked on the door and surprised us because it's really, really hard to, you know, to tell people that you know, this is part of you and you're, you're kind of afraid of how they're going to react. The toughest part, um, a little bit about what uh, Shandy said earlier was the couple of family people like my parents that don't know fully yet. They've had a couple of maybe, you know, inklings, I think, but um, having to, you know, say, sorry, I can't come over at the moment because Shandy's got her nails on and things like that, or we're going out to an event uh, or, you know, we, we're very busy people in the community, so we go out to a lot of these events where, you know, where Shandy's being presented. And, you know, and then telling, you know, family or friends that aren't in the know, oh, you know, we went to, oh, wait a minute, I can't say that. Um, we went to a social. <laughs> I go to a lot of socials, a lot of wedding socials and things like that. <laughs> you know, instead of the parties that I, you know, that we have been going to. So it's, that's been the most difficult part is hiding that little part of my world away because I don't like doing that. Like I said, I was raised to be open and honest and to, you know, accept people. But I, for some reason, I just had this trouble telling, you know, my parents and a couple other people afraid of, you know, like maybe they'd see me as uh, less in their eyes or be disappointed. And so do you worry at all when this piece airs that the truth will come out? Um, we're working towards, um, you know, telling my folks and, you know, the last couple of people. So I'm not really worried. My work knows. Um, a couple of uh, employees uh, at my company kind of saw Shandy and, I, uh, 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 Shandy and I out. And so when, as soon as I found that out, I went to my boss, said, okay, this is what's going on. My boss said, no problem. Talk to human resources. Um, then we let my staff know and we let other people in the company know and nobody's had a problem with it. I came out to my mom just before Christmas and that, you know, she, like all mothers, she says, oh yeah, I always knew. 
you know, and which was which was great. And at the time, I'm taking it. Wow, okay, you know, this this is acceptance, and you know, we can move forward from here. So I started to you know tell her more about who I am and what I'm doing with my life, and it became a bit overwhelming, and she's having a hard time dealing with it now. You know, so it, it's, you know, it's baby steps. It's really a, a bit of a challenge to learn to how much is too much, you know, how, how, how are different people going to respond to things. And, you know, everybody responds to different things in their, in their own different way. And, you know, I've been patient with myself. Lord knows Cheryl's been patient with me, you know, for, for you know, all these years. So I have to give her, you know, my patience too and let her understand and be there to help her out and, you know, and hope for her acceptance. Eat the food. I don't want the food here to go on my hips. That's right. <laughs> the situation is a little different for Chantel, another member of Masquerade. Have some sugar. Her family has no idea that she cross-dresses. Have you ever been recognized when you're out dressed as a woman from friends who know you as a man? No, I haven't yet. Uh, I've, I actually walked right in front of my parents when they're at a red light and they didn't they, they notice me. Chantel says she dresses like a woman because it's fun. It's a social part of me. Um, I basically dress just to socialize. I don't do any dressing at home. Very, very rarely dress at home. Um, but most of it is dressing to go out to Fukurama, uh, to go out to masquerade meetings, to go to a drag show. Uh, just whatever seems interesting. I'm a bit of a photographer at heart, so I, um, this is one of, one of the shoots I did with my, my sweetie. Uh, we did a whole bunch of pictures and, and just had a, had a great day of it. And I got to get into it once in a while too. But Shandy uh, feels that, like she's trapped in the wrong body. Yeah, just a little bit. It's it's a um, constant struggle with who you are, you know, because when you when you're when you're born, you know, they label you. They they lift the legs and they go blue, pink, you know. And when you're looking at different different things, um, you know, like I said earlier, you know, looking at at the GI Joe versus the Barbie, you know, I want to be Barbie. You know, I want to dress like my mom, not my dad. You know, you, you just kind of have an instinct. You know, it's almost like, what type of food do you like? Well, I like chocolate. I don't. I like seafood. I don't. You know, who, who are you? Does that define you? People look at gender and they say that thing between your legs defines who you are. And especially in the, you know, in the last, say, 30 years, people, people learn that it's not just there. You know, I mean, where would women be without women's lib? and burning bras and stuff like that and standing up for themselves. You know, that is a strength. That's a challenge that people have overcome and we've learned from it. Transgender people are on that kind of cusp. You know, we're, because of the, the strives that have been made with, with the gay community, you know, we're, we're poised next to kind of do that. You know, people are going to understand who we are. She's still, you know, in, in terms of age of dressing, almost like a teenager. <laughs> Shandy hopes to eventually become a woman. She's already taking hormone pills to start the process. Purse fetch, though. I mean, that's one of her typical purses. That's what she brought me back from her trip on the weekend. <laughs> Very cute. Planning such a dramatic permanent change, her partner Cheryl says their relationship will remain the same. I know I'm an anomaly in that. Most of the people in the community that we've talked to that have partners uh, when they started going through the change or came out, 99% of them are, have a hard, hard time adjusting. And I've learned over and over again that I'm an exception to that rule um, because I just accepted it. No problem, no ifs, ands, or buts. <laughs> because you're, you guys aren't a gay couple, mm -hmm. how, do you, how are you still attracted to somebody that now looks completely different to the person you originally fell in love with on a physical level. Well, that um, hasn't really been an issue for me either because I fell in love with the person inside. Um, and growing up with science fiction books and, and, and loving uh, the different stories and the morals they tell and everything else like that, that's given me that open-mindedness to just say, okay, we're going to deal with it. If the physical part changes, the emotional part isn't. And that's, that's the important part to me. Um, you know, we have this emotional and intellectual connection that's just not going to change and we'll deal with the physical. I come from a past in which I had abusive boyfriends and everything else like that. I, I learned what a deal breaker was. I learned that abuse, emotional, physical, um, not caring for me as a person, you know, those are deal breakers. This isn't. There's a lot of tough parts to being transgender. Um, you know, when I, when it, for me, when it was just cross-dressing, it was, it was, you know, keeping that part of me hidden from people that I didn't feel comfortable telling. 
um, there came a point where I don't want to hide it anymore. And a lot of like hiccups in between. Um, you know, who's going to accept it? Who, who are you going to lose as a friend by telling them that you do this? Um, and I'm very happy to say nobody. You know, um, we, we're all, you know, we're all afraid that people are going to think that you're a freak and start pointing fingers at you and, you know, desert you and things like that. And I'm very happy to say that I've chosen my friends very well. You know, they're all, they're all behind me 100%. Over the years, and it's been many years, society has proven to me that um, more of them are okay if you give them the chance. Um, we haven't had any major uh, problems with anybody out there. We've heard a few snickers once in a while or a few side comments, you know, a few people pulling on mom's pant leg like, mom, is that a girl or a boy? You know, because um, they tend to be the most perceptive of, of uh, you know, acknowledging that or seeing it and they don't know not to voice it, you know. But we've have never had someone confront us or have a problem with us. We even joined a women's gym and we were up front with the person when we signed on saying, this is who my partner is, will you accept that because she will be presenting as female? You know, they've had no problem. We've been going for over six months and the staff have treated us like gold. From being a little bit different, I've learned that everybody is different. You know, people like to say, oh yeah, everybody's a little bit different, but I'm very different. <laughs> um, but everybody's like that. Everybody has different tastes in everything from clothes to food to movies to what they like to do on the weekends and everything like that. And those are all things that you, as a friend and as a partner and as family, learn to accept.